everyone, Nupkex here, and welcome to our Preparing for Hero League series, where we try out uh, certain heroes who are quite powerful in the meta, but that we don't have a lot of experience with. We get a feel for them, we can learn their strengths and weaknesses, and see how they apply uh, into Hero League, and then get ready to bring them into an actual game. So here we are. Let's play with my buddy Roger here in this game. We set up a pretty cool team comp with these random dudes. We're going to talk about that as we go into the game. We are on Blackheart's Bay, by the way. Uh, which is a pretty cool map for Rexar. Explain why as we go in. Uh, but yeah, here we go. I've got a new uh, build for Rexar, by the way, since the last time I played him, which is much more focused on PvE. I think it's really useful. I think it probably is the best one uh, in the game. Uh, we I was on voice chat with Roger doing this, so there might be less pings and stuff than usual, uh, which is us kind of communicating um, through voice chat as opposed to uh, in the game, but we'll see. You seem just using me should escape this out. Oh, hello, we found ourselves a Thrall. Isn't that nice? Hey, Thrall. You can use the number one button. You see that? It's staying in our hotbar right there. Number one button does control Misha. Let me actually explain how all of that works. So, number one, if you press it onto the ground, you'll see the blue thing over Misha. She'll run to that point on the ground and just stand there. If you put it on an enemy target, uh, you'll see the red thing above Misha's head and above the target's head. Misha will then uh, target that person. Uh, when you press the D key, Misha will get this sort of yellow marker over her head. At that point, she's in passive mode. She'll run back towards you super quick. Uh, she kind of went away. I didn't want her to go there, but oh well. Uh, <laughs> when you press the D key again, it'll put her into just normal Misha mode, where she'll just target whoever you're targeting. And uh, yeah, it, it's kind of cool. She'll like automatically follow and target people for you. So using Misha properly would be kind of a mix of, of using all of these things appropriately. I was trying to zone the Thrall off of uh, Brightwing. Uh, Zeratul has arrived, which is a little bit scary for her. But we've got her coming. Uh oh yeah, this is very scary. Sidestep that. Misha is going to save me, is she? No, she's not. <laughs> she tried so hard. She got a multiple person stun, but Brightwing and myself, we do go down to a nice rotation from the enemy team. I was completely unaware of that. Blame Roger. God damn it, Roger. Why didn't you warn us? Why didn't you? Feels bad, man. So not the best start to the game. That's 10 coins to the enemy team. ETC, though, lurking, hoping to maybe catch someone out. So yeah, that, I think he's just going to die. I'm pretty sure actually... Oh, I do remember this game now. I'm pretty sure the ETC and the Brightwing were a duo queue couple. Uh, they were hilarious. I mean, we get a multiple person stun, then follow that up with a multiple person slow. I don't think it's going to be enough to say... Oh, maybe it is going to be enough to save the ETC. Maybe it is. Yep, no ETC does escape thanks to our intervention. ETC, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. I'm here all week. You can send me the check. It'd be lovely. Uh... But yeah, there you go. So, uh, level 1 I picked up Hunter Gatherer. And at level 4 I'm going to pick up Easy Prey. So Hunter Gatherer, very simple, very straightforward. It's Rexar's version of, um, excuse me, of Regen Master. Just gives you and Misha plenty of survivability. His level 1 talents, apart from that, are kind of underwhelming. Kind of underwhelming. Um, when you finish the Hunter Gatherer uh, quest as well, it gives Rexar himself, not Misha, but Rexar himself, bonus max HP, which is pretty useful because that's probably the way you want to take uh, Rexar down is to get past Misha and blow up Rexar himself. So I thought it'd be pretty nice in this game especially to try to survive, you know, the Chromie and the Zare tool pick potential. The enemy team uh, has gone for a very, like, kind of pick-heavy composition right there. Unfortunately, we missed our stun on the Thrall. We're just going to back off as Misha sort of sells him a little bit. Don't want to let her take any uh, unnecessary tower shots. I want to conserve our mana as much as possible. And there you go, we're just going to help this uh, Siege Camp push in. we got the Siege Camp doing a bit of damage to Thrall and the minions as well. Misha tanking up these terrors, going to bring her back. And once again, just trying to keep Thrall off of this uh, off of this Siege Camp. Get as much value out of this camp as possible. Misha taking a few hits. We do have Men Pet, which is our E ability on her though. Zeratul's up to the north. Fighting with ETC. Just want to make sure ETC doesn't die. Which could be a close thing. Misha stuns both of them. Good girl, Misha. Well done. And they're on the run. Brightwing, though, <laughs> once again, teleporting into ETC, her best friend. I'm going to try to save him. We do catch Zeratul with a slow as we back off. And that's fine by me. And level 7, then, we picked up... I believe it's called Crippling Talent. Uh, sorry, no, excuse me. That would be level 4. This is called Bird of Prey. Um, so, yeah, oh, I didn't explain what the level 4 and level 7 ones do properly. So, level 4, I picked up Easy Prey, which increases Misha's damage to minions and mercenaries by 150% and reduces the damage she takes from them by 
This is going to be very important on Black Arts Bay. Uh, and it's actually very important, I feel like, on any of the maps that Rexar is good at. It adds a ton of wave clear to Misha and makes her very tanky, very survivable against um, against those Merc Camps as well. So you can take Merc Camps very easily with this. It's very nice. Using our control Misha just to pick up that coin camp, uh, the coin that dropped from that chest. Trying to get the stone on the Thrall. We do miss it, though. Misha is zoning him out. Thrall is running scared. And good thing, too, because our teammates are on the rotation around to stop him. Level 7, I picked up Bird of Prey. So again, a similar sort of thing to level 4. But this one will increase our Spirit Swoop, which is our Q, which is a line skill shot that does damage. Gonna make it do 200% damage to minions and mercenaries. So we're really doubling down in this game with this build on maximum damage to minions, maximum damage to mercenaries, just maximum push potential, maximum merc camp taking potential. If you look at our team comp, we have a pretty weak team comp uh, early in the game. We have... Um, you know, we've ETC, we've got Rexar, we have Azul, Brightwing, and a Rainer. We, uh, we've got very little damage, all things considered. We've got very, very little damage. You can see you can actually control Misha with your number one key while you're, um, while you're channeling here. I don't think you can use your trait. I can't confirm, but I don't think you can. Misha, unfortunately, getting a little bit body blocked right there. We do manage to, even in the slowing sand, sidestep the Chromie, which is pretty gay. Misha walks back into the time trap. ETC getting a very nice flank off, very nice pick, and Chromie goes down, that's three coins for us. Zul doing some B-steps to the side. But yeah, basically the plan going into this game, I said to Roger was, okay, while we were in the draft, I said, you know what, I want to play a Rexar game. We kind of picked Zul and ETC, I think they were maybe our first picks, and then the Brightwing. I said, okay, you know what, let's go for a bit of a, a weird comp that might not work on other maps. We're going to go for a, a, a map control type composition. We're going to Thrall actually just popped Earthquake? I think, yeah, he just picked and popped Earthquake over nothing. That's really unusual. He must have wanted to see what it does. <laughs> really odd. odd. Um, I said, look, we'll just go for a super team uh, and map control composition. I have Zul. He's going to soak top and bottom. Zul can take care of those two lanes completely by himself, no problem. We're going to have... Uh... This is kind of scary right now. Good work by Brightwing. A VP actually coming in, but Thrall's arrived as well. But you can see on the minimap, Zul and Rainer are coming as well. So that's pretty good news for us. We're just focusing down this wreck. Uh, oh, nice. The healing from Brightwing keeping us alive through that uh, damage from Zeratul, who did quite a chunk to us. He did quite a chunk. I believe he would have killed us without Brightwing there. Uh, or without Brightwing staying there, I should say. But Brightwing did her job very well, kept us alive during that. And what started off as a bad fight turns into a pretty good one in the end. I think Chromie probably knows we're here. Pick up the regen globe. <laughs> and actually, that was just pure luck stepping into the brush at that time. But you can see there the value of our level 7 really does tear through those minion waves very quickly. Really tears through them very, very quickly. This stage, you're going to have to deal with that in the bottom. I was hoping we could maybe try steal their... Uh... Ooh, we actually catch a Thrall. Hey, Thrall. Nice to meet you. And you can see we do a, a decent chunk of damage to Thrall. Sidestep his stuff. Don't need to worry about that too much. And then bring Misha back uh, to take out this uh, this siege camp. I try to steal that away. Get a couple of extra coins for ourselves to get that push in. So yeah, we can put Rexar in the bottom lane, and he can just bottom lane for days. I can rotate away and take Merc camps whenever we want to. Um, Zul can just deal with top and bottom by himself, no problem. And we've got ETC, Rainer, and Brightwing free to roam the map as they wish, no problem at all. I'm not, I think he has stage dive as well. No, he definitely does have stage dive. So we're super free to roam the map um, and just just have complete control of it. The enemy team, while they have a really nice pick composition, they are very much lacking in terms of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of, of their wave clear, in terms of their map control. Uh, they have heroes that are okay at it, but they don't have anyone that's fantastic. They've got nothing on our scale. So we're going to be much more free to roam the map, to take control of the Merc camps. And hopefully you've noticed us doing that throughout this game. Is that, you know, Rainer is our only real damage dealer. And he scales up not until much later in the game. Yet we're still maintaining map control throughout this whole thing because of the composition we've set up. I'm going to pick up Wildfire Bear at level 13. This is a huge power spike for us. It's basically Burning Rage, but supercharged on Misha. Uh, it's also gonna, I believe it uh, synergizes with Easy Prey at uh, level uh, level 4, so it's gonna do basically almost triple damage against minions and mercenaries, so like she's actually gonna just tear through Merc Waves and Merc uh, Minion Waves and Merc Camps. 
we're going to just destroy those. No problem with this build. Really nice. Um, and she's going to do plenty of damage in team fights as well. Sending Misha in to scare people out. Getting some nice damage down just, just from ourselves, honestly. On to uh, the Chromie. ETC stage diving in. Well played, ETC. Misha uh, getting a little bit confused with her pathing, but no big deal. We're focusing now on the Thrall. Trying to get him down. Switch our target to uh, Arthas as we get uh, slowed down uh, by the Earthquake. And there you go. The Void Prison denying some of the value on that, but it's not a big deal. I'm going to bring Misha back to make sure she doesn't die. And then send her in. Ooh, looks like Misha's going down. Misha does go down. We're hoping to get a channel off while that was going on. No such luck. But Zeratul going in. Gets spotted by the Brightwing ETC Dual Q. And they pick her off. Very nicely done. Thrall now is in a rough spot. I'm just turning in my doubloons as our teammates uh, mop up these kills. I just want to get rid of these doubloons. Don't want to risk losing them in a team fight. I figured our team would have that anyway. And I'm going to rotate down. Misha has respawned. We're going to grab this Merc Camp. And then look into grabbing even more. Just maintaining that coin advantage and the pressure across the map. They're chroming. Drawn to the top lane to deal with the Merc Camp we picked up earlier. And things are looking pretty good. Uh, by the way, level 10, I picked up Unleash the Boars. I think it's the better heroic overall. It's this big conal skill shot. And we'll send down Boars, which will track down heroes in that direction. When the Boars reach the heroes, they'll do a little bit of a chunk of damage. They will reveal them and slow them by 40% for 5 seconds. It's a really nice sort of team fight and engagement tool. I like it a lot. Um, the other option is I used to go for before was Bestial Wrath, which would increase Misha's basic attack damage by 150% for 12 seconds. It's very nice too, uh, but I think Unleash the Boars is just more useful in a team fight where Misha can be CC'd or kited. With Unleash the Boars, you get guaranteed value. Uh, I just think the slow is super useful. Now we've hit level 16, and this was like the point in our composition where I was saying to Roger when we were drafting for this game, this is where we sort of start taking over the team fight a little bit. I said, pick up Rainer in this game and go for Executioner at level 16 because we've got so many ways of triggering Executioner for you. Executioner, in case you don't know, is a level 16 talent for Rainer. Whenever he hits someone with a basic attack, uh, we are considered that they might be doing the boss. Looks like they're not, but we could do the boss. Um, but yeah, whenever, uh, whenever uh, uh, Rainer hits someone with a basic attack, it's going to improve his basic attack damage by 30% for, like, I think it's 3 seconds, something like that. Whenever someone is, not when he hits them, but when they're CC'd, when they're slowed or stunned, something like that. Well, guess what? My Q is a slow, uh, my W is a stun, my Heroic is uh, a 5 second slow, uh, Brightwing polymorphs people, ETC stuns people, maybe even slows them, uh, Zul roots them. Um, yeah, we just... Pretty much every single one of our heroes has a number of different ways to to pull this off. You can see our boss soloing potential here is huge. I was trying to dodge the boss stuns and stuff with the number one key. That one didn't quite work out, which is a bit of a noob move. You can see I'm trying to back off the boss now at this point as well, because the enemy team has arrived. Picked up Primal Intimidation at level 16. Uh, it's basically just, yeah, it's really nice. Whenever uh, a hero hits us or Misha, they're going to have their attack speed slow. We can activate it as well to also continue doing that. Uh, just do like a bigger chunk. There you go. You can see it pulse out from both myself and Misha. It's pretty useful. ETC power sliding in. Nicely done. We're getting onto the point. Three of the enemy team are down. Chromie's here on the point, but she's not going to last too long. Zeratul had already been killed earlier by our teammates. And Misha goes down, but the rest of us survive. Four dead for nothing. Plus get a boss. Getting some nice wave clear with that Q as well. And well played, team. They uh, spotted, obviously the enemy team knew I was going for the boss, but our teammates uh, were doing that. I don't know why ETC was saying ping me, please, but we all decided to ping him anyway. <laughs> we're going to follow up on his request. At this point, there's a few options. It's pretty interesting, but considering that the enemy team is, uh, we, oh, everyone throws all their abilities after the, the Zer tool trying to catch him out. Considering that the enemy team was all dead, they're only respawning now. I figured the best thing to do was actually to just push this boss onto the keep and just try to ensure we take that keep down. That was kind of what I decided would be option number one. Popping my primal intimidation just to slow down the enemy team as they chase us and to stop Arthas from diving us too much as well. Getting some decent damage down on Thrall. The keep goes down. At this point, we really want to start backing out. Nothing much to stay here for. Misha getting caught in the time trap by Chromie. Have her on retreat mode. She actually used Misha charge to jump out and stun Arthas on the way. Catch her with a men pet and Misha walks away in pretty good shape. There you go. There's the wave clear. Look at that. We just tear through these minion waves. It's very useful. But yeah, I, I, 
I have to say, I'm loving this talent build. I, I really think this talent build is awesome. It's so good. Uh, the reason I really like it, ooh, ETC going in on top of the Chromie. I like it. You get a nice little stun there. Catch the Chromie. She gets healed up by Taronda, but she should be going down. There we go. ETC, though, in a spot of bother himself. I'm going to step into the Void Prison. This isn't looking too good for us overall. We're all here, but the enemy team has got a nice sort of flank position on us. Very nice. Rainer going down. That's most of our damage down. I'm going to fall as well. And that's a lot of coins to the enemy team. Luckily, looks like Zul is going to finish off Zeratul. Oh, but the miscalculation. Zeratul walks away with probably about one hit point. Uh, I remember on voice chat, we were going nuts over that. We were like, yep. He's dead. All right, nice. And then we all went nuts. Well, just me and Roger. You know, two people. But all of us, we all went nuts when he... <laughs> when Zeratul somehow survived that. We could not believe it. Zeratul, he was mopping the sweat from his brows at that point. But, uh, yeah, this we were like going, uh-oh, is this the throw? Luckily, we still had the fourth down bottom to protect us from this. But, uh, yeah, that was not a very good team fight. That one went very wrong indeed. Um, it's your Primal Intimidation, there you go, you can see, you can activate it, it's pretty nice. And then it's considering what else to pick. Uh, there's plenty of options, honestly. At level 16, for example, um, I would say, excuse me, probably Feign Death would be my other go-to, which is you can make Rexar himself invulnerable for five seconds. It just helps you if they do try to dive you. That's one of the weaknesses of Rexar, is if they do have a dive-heavy comp, they can get past you. Uh, pa sorry, excuse me, get past Misha and get on top of Rexar, and Rexar can die. Uh, our teammates are completely mental. They're, I'm not sure what they're doing, but they're going in anyway. And the throw is real here at the moment. I think Brightwing might... No, she's going to die. Yeah, that's a dead Brightwing. So ETC and Brightwing respawn and use their globals to instantly get back in. It's going to go, uh-oh, that's not good. And here we go at level 20. I think all of these level 20s are really strong. I couldn't quite decide what to go for in this game. So Frenzy of Kalimdor makes your basic attacks do 10% more damage, which is okay. The bigger deal, though, is that it makes Misha's basic attacks slow the target by 20%. I thought that would be pretty nice, obviously, for protecting Raynor, or, uh, you know, just helping zone off some of these melee heroes a little bit. Also for maintaining that Executioner. So I was kind of considering and thinking about it. I wasn't sure which one quite to go for. This is a pretty bad spot for our teammates. They really should not have gone in there. Rainer gets exploded, Zul gets exploded as well. The whole enemy team was nearby, not the place they wanted to be. Luckily, a Thrall does chase me. I thought I might die as well, but luckily we just about made it out. Uh, Thrall looking for that kill, but not quite getting it. Myself and Misha just trying to, to zone these guys out here, trying to clear out these minions. Which, as Brightwing says, nice throw, boys. It has become quite the nice throw indeed, no doubt about it. Wildfire Bear actually interrupting Zeratul's Hearthstone. Poor Zeratul. If you look at the enemy's base, you might notice something happening at the moment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the other options, you get Hardened Shield. Affects both you and Misha. You both take 75% reduced damage for 4 seconds. Very good option if you're worried about you being focused down or picked off. Very nice option. What I went for in this game, though, was Kill Command. So it makes Unleash the Boars to... Uh, there we go, GG. Hello, <laughs> and uh, getting a message from my friend. Uh, unleash the boars do 50% more damage, which is kind of nice. It also roots the targets it hits for 1.5 seconds. So it's like just almost guaranteed 1.5 second uh, root on multiple members of the enemy team. <laughs> As he says, a WTF moment for sure. I thought that would be really nice against a Zeratul, against a Thrall, against a Tyrande, against a Chromie. I thought it would be really nice against... Basically, everyone on the enemy team to get a route across them. So that's what I went for in this game. But like I said, I think all of those level 20s are very strong. It's just going to depend on the sort of situations you're in. Um, yeah, it depends on the sort of situation you're in. I think they're both, like I said, very good. They're the stats. You can see we actually did a ton of hero damage. And we did plenty of siege damage as well. Not as much as Zul, but still plenty. There you go. That is the talent build we went for in this game. I think it worked very nicely myself and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that quick little look at rexar uh it's all about managing misha correctly staying in a good position getting those nice stuns to the target and with this talent build i really do think that these level four and seven talents i didn't like them before but i love them now i think these are ones are actually the best i used to go for like a team fighting misha type uh, build and it was okay but what you get with this build instead is just tremendous wave clear and tremendous merc camp taking 
And honestly, I just think there's so much more value in that, in being able to just destroy waves and push them out is so valuable. You could see that when we had like the solo lane, it was just so valuable for keeping the push on. It gives you so much map vision, so much map control. And Rexar is often a solo laner, so you can imagine that being very useful in something like Braxis for controlling the points, just having those the lanes pushing in your favor all the time. Uh, just, you know, being able to hold the lane one-on-one -on -one, or even 2v1 and not being able to be pushed in, really. It's so useful. Uh, it's great on Blackheart's Bay. It's great on Dragonshire. I just think on any of the maps that Rexar is really strong on, I think this town build is just excellent because it just exploits the sort of the split map, split push that you've got going. Oh, I just love it. I think it's great. I think it's great. You give up a bit of team fighting, but I think that the map control more than makes up for it. Um... And yeah, there you go, guys. That is how to play Rexar. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Oh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you all next time for more Here's the Store. Bye-bye.